555. Top five teams that need a bounce back. These are all teams that are we all thought would be pretty good, and they've all wound up being kind of average to this point, uh, maybe regressing towards the mean, but uh, either that they play this week or maybe have a bye, they need bounce backs and look good at times, look okay at times. Uh, so just some teams that uh, need uh, a boost over the next few weeks. Number five, Pitt sits at four and three right now. This is a team that, of course, that opening win against West Virginia doesn't look as good now. Uh, that was a, just a knockdown drag out game and I think has set the tone for West Virginia season, unfortunately, for Neil Brown and that crew. But but Pitt needs needs a renaissance here. They need they need a push going down the stretch in the ACC. Uh, they're not. They went into the season as the favorite on that side of the SEC. They are not now. I mean, that is North Carolina's to lose at this point. But the Panthers need to get a bounce back over the next couple of weeks. I mean, yeah, they need to. I'm just I'm very meh on uh, yeah. on Pitt football right now, man. I feel like. Um, you know, they're probably going two and three or so down the stretch, uh, which is going to be good enough to get them into a bowl game. I mean, North Carolina on the road. You'd think that the Tar Heels win that one. Syracuse after that, you think Syracuse will be obviously favorites in there. At Virginia should be a win, but Duke could be a loss. And then at Miami to close the year, and, you know, maybe the Hurricanes are – more improved by by that point so you know they might be going into that final game of the year needing win number six but um, perhaps not I just I'm very meh on Pitt I'm um, Keaton Slovis is all recruiting hype uh, basically or, or was you know I think as far as the way you looked at them this year and like oh well, how are they going to replace this great team that they had well one they decide to go completely away from the offense that they were running. Uh, they lose the terrific quarterback that they had. They lose the OC to Nebraska out of choice as much as anything, like pushed out Mark Whipple because they wanted to go to this this offense they run now, which is like, I mean, it's it's embarrassing, quite frankly, that they, they went as far back as they did, uh, regressed as much as they did by choice. I, I just think that that's, that's kind of crazy to me still. So, yeah, I mean, they need to. I just, I'm just very meh on, on Pitt right now. I, I, yeah, they've just kind of, you know, last year was fun. They had the, the great quarterback, and they made a run, and uh, they're, they're just kind of there, kind of there. Yeah. Number four, SMU. Uh, we talked about them earlier with uh, – with Taylor McCarg, but uh, Tanner Mordecai banged up. And again, uh, he would try to play if he lost a foot. Uh, he's just that kind of guy and so intense. But uh, the fans want to see more of Preston Stone. I know he's a, uh, a, a player they were excited about getting, and he's played uh, a little bit for them. Uh, they're playing a team that also three that needs a bounce back in Tulsa as well. But SMU, I think, under Rhett Lashley, especially what kind of offense he runs. And I think they thought they would be better off at this point, especially trying to show off for whatever potential uh, conference expansion may happen for them in the future. This was just one of those years that you know I think they had higher. I know they had higher hopes, and at this point they sit three and four, and they're just they're just kind of stuck in the mud. Well, Tanner is going to have games where he's just a little shaky. I think we saw that in high school. I mean, like for the most part, he'd be great and be the best player on the field and be the best quarterback on the field and could be downright dominant at times. And then there were just some games where just, you know, it was just not his day. And uh, I think that we've seen that, you know, rear its head a little bit more and more. Um, the more we've seen him play at the college level, because it's just as a player, I think that's just kind of who he is, you know, at this stage. And so um, he's not going to be perfect. Um, but if SMU needs him to be perfect to win a bunch of games, uh, when I think they've got some other, you know, good, talented players, then, you know, that's just that's not going to work. They, so if they think Preston Stone can do that for them, then by all means. But I, I don't think it's necessarily just a, t a Tanner thing. Um, but. You know, I, I can understand why you, you'd maybe think that the it's, there's always that pull for the young guy, right? I mean, the most popular yeah. player is the backup quarterback. So if, when you're struggling, it's no surprise they're calling for him. But I would say about SMU, I mean, who have they lost to, guys? I mean, they lost at Maryland mm -hmm. by a touchdown. Yeah. Maryland's not a bad team. They lost at TCU, or excuse me, home versus TCU by eight points. They lost blowout granted at UCF and you know th that was a very lopsided game and they lost by two points to Cincinnati like that's not a bad that's yeah. you know not a great record three and four but that's not four bad teams that they lost to so I expect them to win this game uh, I, I think Tulsa's fine team but uh, give me SMU to bounce back so in point with your list here I think that they will yeah number three Notre Dame 
Uh, this was a, uh, is it Notre Dame? Garrett, or did I skip ahead? Number three, Notre Dame. Yes. Number three, Notre Dame. Uh, look, they've, they've had to switch quarterbacks because of injury. They've been up and down. They have not met expectations, but I think for Marcus Freeman and the recruiting he wants to do down the stretch, uh, here, it's important for them to go on a run to end the season. I, they still have, uh, you know, some tough games ahead of them, but honestly, like I, I'm still, I didn't think they would be as good as they were ranked. I did not think they would be this uh, up and down and um, Jekyll and Hyde. I thought that maybe they would lose some games, you know, that they weren't, uh, you know, as talented as teams. But I, I didn't see some of the stuff that's gone on with them this year going on. Losing to Marshall, who then kind of went into a fall. Yeah, nobody... And then Stanford, of course. That's enough. And then they the, the win looked like it was so impressive. And in Vegas against Brigham Young, well, Brigham Young is under 500. So, yeah, they. I went to go put together the schedule for us to discuss for tomorrow's pregame and even our opening segment today. And I all the ranked teams, and I was like, damn, they're not ranked. They shouldn't be. They're they're four well, and three. But I was like, oh, I didn't realize they're just completely out of it. And, and look at them down the stretch. Add Syracuse, uh, which is, uh, only has one loss to Clemson. Then they go play Clemson, yep. uh, the team that I just said beat them. They play Navy, who is in a, in a rough way uh, this season. Yeah, yeah, they're not, not very good. Uh, then they have Boston College, who's not very good. And then they close the season on the road at USC. So this is a team that is staring five and seven in the face right now if they do not get a win against Syracuse uh, tomorrow. Whew, well, yeah, they, that would be interesting. Well, I mean, they're underdogs. So, yeah, um, yeah they, I mean, they're slight underdogs at that last I looked, but they're like, you know, a point and a half, two, two and a half. Uh, I think it ranges perhaps. I've kind of looked at it a few different times this week, and, and they're they're slightly favored, but yeah, they have their work cut out for them. I mean, Notre Dame just they're not that very uh, they're not very good offensively, and uh, they're not consistently good enough offensively. Defensively, I think that they're fine. They're still a pretty strong unit, um, and that's that's kind of where they they you know uh, are going to be the strongest but uh yeah offensively it hasn't been very good for them and that's that's been a problem so uh man i, I really don't know how to call this one i think it's going to be a super close game but yeah this is a this almost feels like a must win type of a, a game in so many ways for them but one thing we can say for sure is yeah we don't have to worry about notre dame playoff talk and you know who they might be bumping out because of their schedule or anything like that that's way out the window so that's kind of a nice uh, change of pace number two my beloved florida state seven holes have lost three in a row now to three good teams they've lost to Wake Forest, NC State, and Clemson. Uh, and they were close and had opportunities to take control of those games, especially NC State. They were in control and lost it and win them. Uh, this is a team that is learning how to win, but they also need to bounce back and beat a bad Georgia Tech team this week and beat a Miami team that's flailing uh, the week after that. Uh, they've got Syracuse. Look, the, the toughest matchup they have so far down the stretch, not including the two rivalries, is Syracuse on the road on uh, November 12th. But they need to win and and they could very well win all five of these games, but I think four out of five is really possible, and three out of five is a definite uh, must for Mike Norvell and this team as they go down the stretch, as they try to put their stamp on recruiting and going into next year as a team that can maybe contend for the ACC. So Florida, the state of Florida, Florida State is, again, three losses to three consecutive ranked teams. Miami's not good. Florida is very average. And so not much has changed this year. And, and so somebody among those three needs to kind of maybe have a little run down the stretch to kind of get themselves put up into a bowl game. Florida State will make a bowl game. But, yeah, that's uh, – man, that's a pretty good little buzzsaw. Wake Forest, North Carolina State, Clemson. The problem is two of those games were at home and you lost. Yeah, and get, like, progressively moving up the rankings each yeah. week uh, and showing, like, okay, well, you're close. You're right here. Now but, try this. But you're not quite there yet. So I I am not discouraged by that run. It, I wish they could have gotten one of them. But uh, – the, it just shows you they would have lost. They would if they lost to Wake Forest like they did. They would have lost to NC State worse, and then Clemson would have just you know eaten them piece by piece uh, in the years past. So they're taking positive steps forward. And number one, uh, Kansas lost three in a row, and this Kansas and Florida State uh, obviously different, but it, like kind of in the similar spot in that you've lost three games in a row to three good teams. You need to find one more win, especially for Kansas to get in a bowl. 
I have a feeling that they'll get it, especially with Daniels coming back uh, after the bye this week. They don't play this week, but they need they need to get that that juice back that they had early in the season, and that was you know probably taken away a lot with the loss of, of Jalen Daniels. We'll see if they can get it. It's going to be really tough for them because the their schedule is now in its hardest part, which pretty much is everybody in the Big Twelve right now. But uh, we'll see. I mean, there's potential for them to to get some wins down the line, but they they can they've got to play a little bit of better defense than they have uh, in the past few weeks to get that done in the three losses they've had tcu by seven at home 10 to oklahoma and 12 to baylor in a game in which it almost got out of hand so that's a little bit deceiving boy oklahoma state tech texas and they're on the road against tech. kansas state yeah kansas against baylor almost got out of hand and then they almost made it a, yeah a, you know they almost made it which is that hard you know go remember, remember baylor from one and eleven to seven and six to then whatever it was when they went to a sugar bowl and lost to oklahoma i wonder if this is their seven and six if they can get to it I'm not saying they will that quickly but maybe they're turning but yeah they got they got to end they got to stop the bleeding no chance it's seven and six this year the with the like they're they're gonna lose the majority majority of their remaining games that this are you saying this could turn into next year a seven and six because it's not a seven and six this year they're, they'd have to go five and three they're not winning two they, more games in what my if opinion. they win and get a bowl game and win the bowl game is what i'm saying okay they're yeah not I'm seven not, and six. I, but i I'm, I'm looking at just the regular season because they're not guaranteed to go to a bowl game i know they need only one more win but i'm, I'm having a hard time seeing it there i, I understand but yeah, i'm just so, saying that maybe this is that and maybe they're not quite to that second year under matt rule yeah i mean i think that they could be building towards that um and this is already a huge jump from where they've been any time in recent history so i'm not trying to you know take away from the accomplishment but i mean there's a realistic scenario where they lose like seven straight to close the year i mean there really is and mm -hmm. uh, that all coincides with jalen daniels injury still have not seen any update on uh, when he could possibly return, um, which is kind of interesting because, you know, there he was with Lance Leipold in the office, and they were kind of making fun of reports, remember? And I'm not saying, like, you know, do what you want to and play the, the game or whatever, but that was what, like, closing in like a month ago now at this point. And so I, I'm curious of, like, does he come back? Um, but, you know, yeah, they're they're a good team. They're improving. They're heading in the right direction. They got to just hold on to Lance Leipold. But I just think that the Daniels injury and and the schedule ramping up a little bit is uh, is catching up to them. So, um, yeah, I, I do think that it's possible that they could win a, a game or two, but it just doesn't look likely based on kind of the trajectory they've been they on. They got to find a way to win a game, and it won't be easy. But if they do, they're bowl eligible, and then maybe they get be huge. a pretty good draw. Yeah. That would be a nice step up yeah. for Lance Leipold. So these are five teams right. that need a bounce back and uh I, number two is the one i hope for the most and but. all five of them might change next week probably <laughs> will because of what happens every week in college football thank you paul again it's been a great friday